Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert and I am joining me old buddy, old pal, Rich Rogers from Workstation Pros. Hello. Down near the beach in sunny Margate. Is the whole world moving to Margate? It would seem so, but I was here first. He was. Um, so, you have hopefully already seen the fact that our friends at Universal Audio have brought out their Windows drivers for Thunderbolt. They are not the only people to be doing this. Um, the fabulous people at Focusrite have done the same thing. They certainly have. And the drivers are absolutely rock solid. I'm absolutely bowled away by them. I think they're brilliant. Um, didn't have to do any of the jiggery pokery this time with the focus rights. Um, because they are approved for Thunderbolt 2, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, just to add to the confusion, yeah. So I suppose for the uninitiated, let's give it a very quick breakdown just so that everyone's... Because it is complicated. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thunderbolt 1, Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 3. So Thunderbolt 1 and 2 look the same. Exactly they have the, the same, same display port Just double style. the speed on Thunderbolt 2. Yeah. Thunderbolt 3 Which is... Which also shares a similar connector, if not the same connector, to USB-C. On Thunderbolt 3, yes. <laughs> so basically, however, the, the, the chipset that controls it can either do USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 or just USB-C. Right. Um, not confusing at all. Oh, no, not at all. No. So what Thunderbolt have done, uh, sorry, what Focusrite have done is they've brought out the beta drivers, these are just beta at the moment, but... Uh, they're pretty well, they're damn pretty, solid. Pretty yeah. solid beta drivers. And that will give you Thunderbolt 2 on the Thunderbolt 2 connection going into anything that is Thunderbolt 2. So we've got a Thunderbolt 2 card inside this here, um, HP Z640. Yes. And that's the only card that they do do. Right. Um, you can also only get that across all the other workstations, including the Dell Precision that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so don't get me wrong, that's still massive headroom. It's 20 gigabits a second. It's, it's for audio, it's, it's a dream come true, hence why UA and everything's just, you know, works so well on, on the Mac front with it and why everyone's wanted Thunderbolt for audio. Yeah. So um, the drivers, Go straight in to Thunderbolt 2 on any Thunder. They haven't given um, a, a supported or unsupported list. They've just kind of said Thunderbolt 2. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it works. So we're running the Claret 2 Pre. Yep. But we've also run the Claret 4 Pre. Yep. Um, and it's rock solid. One thing that I really like, now coming from the Mac platform over yep. to Windows, I am totally used to going in to Pro Tools and going to uh, Playback Engine and being able to change my hardware buffer size mm. within Pro Tools. Yep. Now, in my change over to the Windows platform, yeah. that is not the norm. No. It's not the case. And I was amazed to find I could do the buffer size change within Pro Tools yeah. using the Focusrite driver. Focusrite, well done. Yeah, that amazing. is a serious coup. And as far as I'm aware, and I've used a lot of Windows drivers recently, they are the first one that will allow you to change the buffer size within Pro Tools. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just to prove that it doesn't require a reboot or anything like that, it's changed to 128 samples within here. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, presto. And away we go. Even at 128, the, the um, audible latency was next to nothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing you would notice, or we did notice, is the, on this particular session, which is about 70 tracks, um, obviously in this particular one, there's a lot of UA plugins, yeah. um, and we haven't got any kind of card or um, stuff built into this particular machine. No. Not at the moment, we've got that to play with later. More videos to come. Yep. Um, but we did notice the load on the machine went up significantly yeah. when we went down to a very, very low sample rate. Yeah. Uh, to a low buffer size comeback. Um, so if I can go back, you'll notice that the um, buffer size down at 32 samples, which is basically it's pretty I mean, hardcore. As soon as I start this session, it jumps up a little bit, yeah. theoretically maxes out, but that's just the initial start up and it's absolutely fine. Yeah, as soon as it just reallocates itself to the threads, it's because it's kind of rebooting the session to a certain yeah. degree. But I mean, look, you know, this, we're talking about milliseconds here. Um, and to get that down to um, 32 samples within um, the ASIO driver, 
I mean, like, you know, we're kind of uh, HD native, aren't we? You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, you know, that I think one thing that's really important to point out, the small one, the, the Claret 2 Pre, I mean, you know, we're kind of 350 pounds, something like that. Mm. And you're getting that kind of quality. You're getting a driver that's that solid, even in beta form. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, hey, new Christmas present. I'm totally sold on it. I think it's brilliant. Um, and once again, showing the advancements uh, in Windows. You know, it's like this, this is this not glitchy. It's it's everything's doing what it's meant to do. It's all feeling solid. It's it's great. I we're would... in a we're in a platform I'm familiar with, running so, um, hardware yeah. that I love the sound of. I mean, on Mac, and I've got say the the, the bigger version, the Apri. Yeah. Pre, yeah. Um, they sound Happy great. They're great yeah. sounding boxes, and quite frankly, it just works. Yeah. And really. I'm a simple bugger. I just want it to work yeah, every yeah, yeah. time out of the box. Well, what people put people off, of, as we've spoken about in other videos, you know, over the years, you know, going back 10 years or people just, it was, I think people felt they always had to do things in a certain order on Windows. You know, right, so if I'm going to open that and I want to change to that, or I want to drop the sample rate, or I want to change the input monitoring, there was always, is there going to be a glitch? Or And you kind of found these workarounds. This is almost feeling like core audio. You know, this is this is this feels like I'm on OS X with core audio, happily switching. There's no there's no uh, crackles or pops or and and I'm not being funny to get down to those sample rates, um, and it still feel that solid. Is is just great. I'm I'm really I mean well done. You know, it's it's great great stuff from Focus right. So um, we're going to get back to mixing this session because, quite frankly, it's fun. Um, well done to Focusrite, as we've said. Great job. Um, fantastic stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed that. You've got something from it. I've been James from Pro Tools Expert. I've been Richard Rogers from Workstation Pros. And we'll see you again soon for some more gear talk.